good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be a part of this webinar. And uh, I don't have any uh, conflict of interest regarding this particular presentation. Uh, the outline of the talk is uh, described in the slide. We'll be talking about the background, the anatomy, the classification, and then certain fractures of the base of the first metacarpal, which are eponymous, such as the Bennett's fracture, the Rolando's fracture. And then we'll be also talking about extraarticular and epiphyseal fractures. <clears throat> so metacarpal fractures uh, of the base of the thumb account for almost 25% of all fractures of the metacarpal and about 10% uh, of all hand fractures that are seen in the emergency room. And about uh, 78 to 94% of all of these fractures involve the base of the first metacarpal. And this came from a study by Pellegrini in 1988. The uh, first CMC joint, that is the base of the first metacarpal and the trapezium have a very peculiar anatomy. And it has been likened to that uh, of the uh, saddle and the, uh, and the back of a horse. And these two interlocking saddles, they allow movement in two planes. And I'm sure that we'll all appreciate that the first metacarpal, uh, carpometacarpal joint allows for a very wide arc of movement. And it is because of the articular surfaces and the ligaments that stabilize the first metacarpal onto the trapezium that we enjoy such a wide variety of movement along with strength that is and stability that is provided by 16 ligaments that stabilize the uh, joint. Of all these ligaments, the beak ligament or the oblique ligament as we call it is perhaps uh, one of the most important or the key ligaments that provides stability to this particular joint. <clears throat> there are some dorsoradial ligaments also that originate from the dorsal tubercle of the trapezium and uh, they insert onto the dorsal edge of the base of the thumb metacarpal. Uh, why are we talking about all these ligaments? It is because uh, the Bennett's fracture is uh, where we have the medial fragment that remains attached and the pull of the APL displaces or dislocates the joint and it is the volar beak ligament that holds on to that fragment and hence it is important to understand the anatomy to be able to figure out how we reduce and fix the fracture. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. <clears throat> so as I told you, um, fractures of the base of the first metacarpal have been classified by the names of the uh, scientists or people who have described it. And then we have this classification by Green where they classified as Bennett's being type one, Rolando's type two, extra articular type three, again, subclassified as transverse and oblique and type four or epiphyseal fractures. Another classification that uh, we should know about is the Browner classification, <clears throat> where they looked at the fracture anatomy or the line of the fracture, and they described it as epibasal uh, being transverse oblique, Bennett's fracture, Rolando Y or uh, T fractures, and then comminuted fractures of the base of the first metacarpal. So let's uh, dwell a little bit more into details of the Bennett's fracture. So this was first described by uh, Bennett uh, in the, uh, Edward Bennett in the um, Dublin Pathological Society way back in 1881. And um, he presented five united intraarticular fractures, and that's how this particular fracture is, is bearing his name ever since. And it is the second most common fracture at the base of the thumb metacarpal, accounting for almost 40% of the fractures. Males are more predisposed to having this fracture because of injury, and it is often seen in the dominant hand in the mid-30s. So these are just the... Uh, and the epidemiology of this particular fracture. And the usual mechanism is an axial blow with the metacarpal infla inflection or a tendon tendential blow over the base of the, uh, uh, of the metacarpal. There may be concurrent fractures of the trapezium oftentimes are associated with this particular fracture and should be looked for. So there is basically a fracture subluxation at the first CMC joint. The fracture line is vertical or oblique and the volar fragment is of usually of variable size. And this is how we would typically see a Bennett's fracture 
in clinical practice uh, because the medial fragment is still attached to the volar beak ligament, the pull of the abductor pollicis longus will displace or dislocate the first metacarpal depending upon the size of the medial fragment. So um, uh, there is usually a supination, rotation, and torso-radial displacement of the, uh, of the metacarpal, which is a larger fragment. And it's important to know that because we do just the reverse to reduce and fix the fracture. Uh, what about the, radio, the radiology of the investigations? We get uh, a true anterior posterior view of the Roberts view, a uh, true lateral view, and you uh, sometimes get an oblique view as well. But in the oblique view, the fragment is often masked by the metacarpal. Uh, these are the positions uh, that have been described for the Roberts view and the oblique and the lateral view. Uh, the treatment is basically... Um, um, it varies from applying splints to cast, skeletal traction, and fixation, but there's a large amount of controversy and agreement exists that reduction is usually easy to obtain, but difficult to maintain. And uh, there have been several studies that have been uh, published in literature. We need not belabor too much on this, but the basic tenet of treatment is to restore stability and to restore articular congruity. And... Uh, uh, this is usually accomplished either by percutaneous fixation or open reduction and internal fixation. And the basic maneuver is to uh, reverse the deformity that is correcting the supination by pronating the metacarpal, applying actual traction and reducing the metacarpal towards the beak fragment and then fixing it with K-wires. Uh, and if this is not possible or if the fragment is large, then you would open reduce an internal fix either with K wires or screws, whatever is available. <clears throat> the most uh, convenient approach is the Wagner approach, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Uh, it is over the subcutaneous border of the first metacarpal with a uh, L shaped extension, and then you open reduce and fix the fracture after reduction. <clears throat> screw fixation also is a possibility, but it is more demanding technically. The fragment should be large, otherwise you would uh, shatter the fragment as you're drilling. The reduction has to be accurate, and fixation can be accomplished either with one or two screws, depending upon the size of the fragment. It is always recommended to use two screws to avoid uh, rotational uh, instability. So the outcomes basically um, are consistently robust, provided you have uh, accurately reduced and uh, you have reconstituted articular congruity. However, complications are not uh, uncommon. Although non-union is rare, malunion is the most common complication that you would see resulting in arthritis and then management of that particular arthritis is pretty demanding and challenging for the patient. <clears throat> As you can see, we have done uh, in this particular view, uh, there was a Bennett's fracture that was treated elsewhere, uh, not completely reduced and displaced later, and we had to arthrodise the first CMC joint. The second type of fracture is a Rolando fracture, where uh, uh, this is a fracture of the base of the metacarpal, uh, which is usually extra-articular, and there is combination that may be associated. Uh, the treatment has been very well described by Peter Stern and is uh, available for your review in the textbook. But I'm just going to kind of very quickly talk about uh, the treatment that involves fixation and bone grafting if there is a void in the metathesis. Uh, either plates in T-shaped configuration or KYs may be used for the treatment. And uh, there is a technique that has been described, which is uh, an oblique skeletal traction, but it does not have much relevance in today's era where we have very nice implants available for fixation. <clears throat> Uh, tension band wires have also been described. Uh, limited ORI with bone grafting has been described. But uh, well, suffice it to say that prognosis is usually guarded if uh, you accomplish, if you try to do this close reduction uh, method because uh, the reduction may not be accurate and degenerative arthritis is usually related to the degree of ammunition. So uh, uh, it is best to treat these fractures by open reduction and close fixation. The third subtype is extra-articular fractures, where you have uh, uh, 
fragments that may be adducted and flexed. It is very important to distinguish this, these fractures from the Bennett's and the Rolando types. Uh, they are usually transverse or oblique fractures. And again, treatment is pretty uh, straightforward. And most of these people will usually do well, even if they are not very accurately reduced. Um, and they can be amenable to KY fixations, screw fixations, or even a thumb spike or cast. The only thing that you need to watch out for is a potential for shortening, and that may result in a little bit of compromise of function of the thumb. Um, so if you have stable non-displaced fracture, you can uh, treat them with thumb spike or cast. If uh, you have unstable fractures, then you would need to fix them. Uh, either with KYs or screws or plates, as I talked about. The fourth type uh, that we talk about in the last type in this particular talk are the epiphyseal fractures, which are usually seen in uh, skeletal immature uh, children, and they may be classified as type A, B, C, and D, the Salter Health classification, and I'm sure that all of you are aware of this classification. Uh, the most common fracture type that you see is the type B, uh, where you see this beak in the metaphysis, and then usually close reduction and cast, or for type B and C, close reduction, and then at times you may put in a K wire. <clears throat> so in uh, type D, the preferred treatment is that with K wires and open reduction internal fixation. In conclusion, these are common injuries that uh, are very frequently seen in clinical practice. We should be aware of the uh, pathomechanics, the classification, and the treatment recommendations. Outcome for Rolandos are usually worse than for Bennett's. Uh, the extraarticular injuries can generally be treated non-surgically. And if there is any intraarticular involvement, uh, maintenance of length stability and congruence of the joint are of paramount importance. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.